Many English learners make mistakes with prepositions, and that is regardless of their level. I have some very advanced students who make mistakes with prepositions quite regularly. And in today's lesson, we are going to look at 20 of the most common preposition mistakes and how you can quickly fix them. Let's take a look. The first preposition mistake that I hear quite regularly is to spend money in something or to spend time in something. This is a case when you need the preposition on instead of in. She spends a lot of money on traveling. And this is the next one is one I hear all the time and it is arrive to somewhere. Now we don't say arrive to, the preposition depends on where you arrive. So if you arrive in a city, we'll use the preposition in. So this is where it's important to be confident with your prepositions of place. For example, I arrived in Madrid last weekend. If you're using a more specific point, like a party, we use the preposition at. What time did you arrive at the party? Number three is to be married with somebody. We say to be married to somebody. Sally is married to John. It's also the same with engaged, when you are not married yet, but you have promised to get married. Sally is engaged to John. Four is an example when you should use a preposition, but many people don't. This is explain you. So with explain, we use the preposition to. Explain something to somebody. I have already explained the situation to him. The next is good or bad or excellent or terrible. Pick your adjective. And many people say in. Okay, so they'll say, I'm good in sport. So we don't say in, we say I'm good at maths or I'm terrible at maths for example. Number six is in Instagram, in YouTube, in the internet. All of these take the preposition on. I'm on Instagram. He is not very active on YouTube. I'll look for the information on the internet. The next one is a common mistake particularly by Spanish speakers. They tend to translate durante to during in sentences like this. I have been working here during two years. And it's a logical mistake, right? Because we're focusing on the duration, we're focusing on how long. However, in English, we use the preposition for. I have been working here for two years. Be careful with that one, it's an easy mistake to make. Number eight isn't necessarily a mistake per se. It's more of a general confusion with on and in time. So on time is the opposite of late, right? So it means before or at an agreed time. For example, we are happy to inform you that your flight is on time today. So it means your flight is not late. It is going to leave at the scheduled time. On the other hand, in time means that you didn't miss an opportunity to do something. For example, I didn't arrive in time for my flight and so I missed it. The flight left on time. I didn't arrive in time to catch that flight. Nine is by my own. I hear this one all the time and it's a little bit of a mix of two expressions which mean the same thing. They mean without the help of other people but by my own is incorrect. We can either say by myself, I did it by myself, or I did it on my own. So be careful not to mix both expressions, choose one or the other, by myself or on my own. 10 is by the moment. We don't say by the moment when the meaning is for now. We say at the moment or for the moment. I don't have any questions for the moment. Maybe I will in the future, but at the moment or for now, I don't. 11 is an example of when people have a tendency to use a preposition when we don't need it. And this is, I went to home. So when we use home, we don't use the preposition to. Went home. It's different with other things. I went to work, I went to the supermarket. Went. Specifically when we talk about home, we just say I went home with no preposition. And this is only with I went. It's different if we say I am. I'm at home at the moment. I'm at home. The next mistake is similar than. So we don't say similar than, we say similar to. These shoes are really similar to those shoes, but these shoes are cheaper. So I'll think I'll buy these. Okay, similar to something else. 
Number 13 is depends of. So we don't use of with depends, we use the preposition on. For example, I don't know if I will be able to come this weekend, it depends on how much work I have to do. 14 is ask to somebody. So we don't use a preposition in this case, it's another example of when people use a preposition when they don't need one. So we don't say, I asked to my boss. We say, I asked my boss. The next is think in. We say think of or think about. What are you thinking about at the moment? 16 is another example of an unwanted preposition that people try and use. We don't say discuss about something. We say discuss something. They were discussing politics at the dinner table. The next is capable to. We say capable of. For example, the government was not capable of running the country effectively. 18 is an example of when people tend not to use a preposition when you actually need a preposition. So we don't wait something or wait somebody. We wait for something or we wait for somebody. I was waiting for the bus for about half an hour. Number 19 is another example of an intrusive preposition. We don't say enter to somewhere, we simply enter somewhere. She entered the building. And the last one that I have for you today is I'll be out of the office since tomorrow. So, so many people get confused between from and since. In this case, we're talking in the future simple. So we're going to use from, from a point in the future. Since is usually used with the present perfect. If you would like a more dedicated lesson about when to use from and when to use since, let me know in the comments section. It could be useful for, for some people. In this case, we need to use from. I will be out of the office from tomorrow. It's like starting tomorrow. So there are 20 top preposition mistakes and how you can quickly fix them. It's not always easy, I know, especially if you are a more advanced learner and maybe you have the habit of using the incorrect preposition. But just take a moment to really focus on your accuracy, especially regarding prepositions. If this lesson has been useful, don't forget to give me a like, leave me a comment letting me know what you think and why don't you check out one of my other videos right now if you haven't already seen them.